Some governments can work together with other countries for mutual self-interest in order to heighten economic trade, diplomacy, and culture. Then, there are governments who decide to overthrow the leadership of other countries in order to capitalize on their own wealth and power. This was the case between the United States of America and Cuba, which resulted in the failed Bay of Pigs invasion April 17, 1961. The president of Cuba at the time, Fulgencio Batista, who, by all reports, was a dictator backed by the American government, hated by the majority of Cubans because of his complicit behavior in allowing Americans to buy up as much of Cuba's resources and real estate as they could get their hands on. Batista was also running an extremely corrupt government full of payoffs, kickbacks, and inefficiency in running his own country for his people. A young man named Fidel Castro, nicknamed Comandante and constantly wearing green combat fatigues, would lead a revolution in order to remove Batista from power. The U.S. were, of course, completely opposed to losing the money, property, and companies they'd gotten, and while they didn't like the way Batista ran the country, couldn't back Castro because of his anti-American stance. Fidel Castro was fiercely nationalistic and pro-Cuban, and his popularity among the people skyrocketed, allowing him to depose Batista January 1, 1959 and take political and military power. The American president at the time, Dwight Eisenhower, saw Castro immediately make changes which would negatively affect the U.S. Castro nationalized sugar and mining and introduced land reform which basically completely ousted any foreign or U.S. involvement they once had. This and the fact that Castro was moving closer to a solidified relationship with the Soviet Union during the Cold War would, in the minds of the American government, give enough of a reason to remove Castro as a leader. In March of 1960, Eisenhower would allocate $13 million in change to the CIA to train some 1,200 Cuban exiles and enemies of Castro to invade their own country of Cuba and try to kill the bearded, cigar-smoking communist leader. Things were looking bad for the Americans in Cuba as early as January 1961, after Castro ordered Havana's U.S. Embassy to reduce the 300 staff members there as he considered most of them to be spies. The Americans responded by ending all diplomatic relations and attempt to overthrow the Castro government. After a change of American leadership and the presidential election of John Fitzgerald Kennedy, JFK would inherit the plan from Eisenhower, and the Bay of Pigs invasion took place April 17, 1961. Most of JFK's military advisors argued against an amphibious attack, but the young man would not be dissuaded. The American boats landed, and the U.S.-trained and armed Cubans were swiftly defeated as there was no air support and they were completely outnumbered. The American plan to see the Cuban people rally behind the anti-Castro group fell apart almost immediately. And soon, Castro's counterattack from his military ended the invasion with over 100 of the attackers killed and 1,100 captured. America was humiliated on the world stage, and Castro would go to the Soviets to request military aid against the U.S. aggressors. The Soviets were only too happy to help, which involved their sending missiles against the Americans and would eventually lead to the Cuban Missile Crisis of October 1962. John Fitzgerald Kennedy would be assassinated in 1963, while Fidel Castro would remain the leader of Cuba for decades, dying in 2016 at the age of 90.